Now, to sort of build a bit of a picture, obviously, because you're a coach, so I'm keen to pick your brain on this too. If I was, say, I don't know, maybe a 22-year-old female, I go to the gym a little bit, but I'm really wanting to compete and get into powerlifting. What would the first few steps for me be to get into the sport? So first thing I would say to anyone is get a coach. Um, it's very, very hard to do it without a coach. A lot of people think, uh, you know, I do a squat bench and deadlift in the gym. How much more different can it be? You need a coach, like, yeah. especially at the start. Um, I know some lifters that self-coach, I've no idea how they do it, um, but they tend to be, like, more advanced. Like, you don't normally see beginner to intermediate lifters without a coach and I think that's really important um regarding that I would say try and find a coach that like speak to lots of different coaches and see try, uh, ideally go on a call with them if they offer that and speak with them and see how you gel together because what some kind coaches, of questions would I ask the coach if I was new to the world of powerlifting what would be some green flags and red flags that I would look for and like in a some, yeah or, and what questions do I ask if I'm completely new to powerlifting and I jump on a call with you right now I'm a client you're my potential coach what are some questions I should ask you to decipher whether or not you're a good coach hmm, this is a good question there's this is like very very wide and broad um but I think I would first of all ask about the communication aspect, like what can I expect, like when am I going to hear from you, when am I going to get my programming and like try and work out how reliable that is. If you can speak to current or ex-clients, then great, because they're going to tell you, because obviously a coach can say whatever they want. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's a really big thing, because if you aren't hearing back from your coach um, when they say they're going to message you back or give you feedback, or you're not getting your programming on time, like that is a huge red flag. Um, like, I mean, you're paying for a service, you need to get the service and it affects you massively as an athlete. Um, so that is a big thing. Um, what else would I say? I would ask just like, what do you expect from me as an athlete as well? Um, and I think like, just generally speaking to a coach, what you want to watch out for is like a coach that makes it about them and not about the lifter. Yeah. Back in um, my day when I competed at World Champs, I did I've the done 300. This yeah. Yeah. Like, fair enough if you're asking about the coach's personal things. Like, when I go on a consultation call with someone, if they ask me about my own things or if they say, I've got my first international coming up and I think you might be a good coach for me because you've been there and done it yourself, I'll talk to them a bit about that and how I could possibly use my experiences to help them but it's when the coaches are constantly like well I've done this so I'm therefore a good coach it's like well no how how many different kinds of lifters at different levels have you coached and how have you been able to develop or help them like whether it's physically mentally both um because mental development is just as important as physical when you're trying to be in a sport like powerlifting that is you know the long game would you say that their reputation as an athlete when they competed or when they are currently competing is a good sign of whether or not they're a good coach, you know, their ability to compete as an athlete? I think, like, that's a bit of a two-sided thing. So, like, first thing I'd say is just being a good lifter doesn't mean you're a good coach. But at the same time, if you can do both well, they work so well together because, like, you can – there's so many times that I've been able to relate like so closely with my clients. Like it's actually unusual that I have one of them come to me with an issue and I've not been there myself. So like empathy wise, it's really good. And I can chat to them a bit about like how I dealt with it and how I've dealt with possibly other clients who have gone through the same thing. Um, because I know that some coaches um, have never competed themselves and I've, I just don't understand like, how can you possibly put yourself in that that person's shoes when you've never done it if yourself? If you haven't done the thing, that's that's the exact same thing in the world of bodybuilding. Yeah. How do you know what your athlete is going through? You know, if they're having to do something extreme like a water cut or something like that, how do you know what they're going through yeah. if you haven't walked the walk mm -hmm. yourself? Or even like knowing 
how hard it is to peak in mm. like have these heavy weights on your back session in session out like it's just very hard to understand and like even some people in the gym like I've got friends in the gym that that don't compete in powerlifting but they really like doing squat bench deadlift powerlifting style training but they still will not 100% understand what it's like to fully do it competitively and if I'm going back again if I'm this 22 year old female keen to get into it first piece of advice is to get a coach what if I say to you but Annie I, I can't afford a coach but I want to get into powerlifting and maybe I just want to try it out for eight weeks or 10 weeks to see if I'm even any good at this thing before yeah. I invest in a coach. What things should I do to start? Maybe in terms of my potential split sets and reps and exercises, obviously caveat it with it's going to be different for everyone. Yep. But what would be some good points to start with? So you're right. Like it definitely would be different for everyone. And it depends on how long this female had been training for and what kind of thing she does already um so like when I get a new client coming on especially one who's you know pretty new to powerlifting I always ask how many like how what their frequency is like just now over their squat bench deadlift and how many sort of how much time they spend on their accessories stuff like that and then you slowly usually have to build it up from there um but the first thing I would ask is like how many times do you squat bench and deadlift in a week and then say she maybe said I do them all once a week. Um, I would say, right, well, why don't you try keeping your deadlift once a week for now, squat twice, bench twice, and then come back to me in however many weeks. Let me know how things are, how you're adapting, and then, you know, I would try and it's very it's very difficult to say when you not got that communication with that person, but I'm always very keen to get anyone involved. So even if I couldn't be their coach. I'd always be open to have someone messaging me being like, look, I'm thinking of doing this style of training. Do you think that makes sense? I'd be like, yeah. Like, I'm not going to write a whole program for them for nothing, but I'd be happy to lend an ear and give them a... I've done that before, like, giving people a couple of pointers where I'd say I'd... they've messaged me their program and said, what do you think of this? Um, this is people I know, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> not, not just a random. <laughs> yeah, and then I've said, like, this is pretty good, but I'd maybe tweak this a little bit here um here's my reasons sort of thing you can always speak to so many people this is a thing like especially lifters high up in the sport and coaches high up like or even just coaches in general they they want people to get involved and do well so like if somebody's gatekeeping stuff is you know you question their intentions a bit yeah it does feel like a sport where everyone sort of encourages everyone i suppose the format of it sort of promotes that as well but back to the so the first thing there would be if they have been training like you said would be increasing the frequency where do you stand with it in terms of their technique what if they're doing each lift three times a week but they're doing them very poorly would you still yeah. then encourage them to increase the frequency or would you say keep doing it once a week but improve on these things because your back looks looks like you're a dog taking a poop when you're doing a deadlift. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I think there's a very fine line with that. Like it depends how bad it is. Um, yeah. Because on one side, you wouldn't want to increase the frequency when something's really bad. Yeah. Because you obviously don't want to, um, you know, promote injury or niggles. However, on the other side, increasing frequency is going to give them more exposure to it and more practice, and that's when they're going to get better. So it would totally depend on like. How that person lifted um if you can like sometimes a good thing to do some coaches do like a technique review so like you don't need to pay like a monthly fee or whatever you can maybe do it for cheaper and um, send them a bunch of videos and then they'll send you some technique analysis back um that would be a cheaper option um with some coaches that do offer that yeah that's really good advice i didn't know they did that it's good i just some people do yeah the reason i ask that is because when i started with a bodybuilding coach quite a few years ago when I was competing I said oh I need to grow my legs like would you say I should increase the frequency from once to twice a week and his advice was just let's see if we can get one leg day right before we increase it to two <laughs> leg days which yeah. obviously different sports but like you say the more reps you do the higher the chance of you getting better because as long as the reps are improving you're not doing 
the technique poor every single time yeah. but if you're yeah. focusing on improving another thing like just popped into my head there as well is like chat to loads of powerlifters in your gym if you can and get technique advice from them because people are often really willing to help um so stuff like that would be good um but yeah like increasing or not increasing frequency is a very very subjective thing yeah absolutely and that's probably best done under the eyes of a good coach because yeah. like you said if you're doing it poorly and you go from doing 20 reps poorly to 40 reps poorly yeah. it's not really advantageous exactly all right now to bring it back to you as an athlete 